Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 3, David Walker. Although Harriet Tubman, Frederick Douglass, and John Brown may be more famous, David Walker was at least as influential a voice in the movement to abolish slavery in the United States during his brief life. Born a free man in North Carolina not long after the founding of the United States, Walker forcefully advocated for emancipation in writing and in speeches. He also put his money where his mouth was by assisting runaway slaves upon their arrival in Boston, where he lived for most of his adult life. Walker wrote numerous editorial pieces for Freedom's Journal, the first Black-owned newspaper in the United States. However, his most significant contribution was a lengthy 1829 work that came to be known simply as Walker's Appeal in which he spoke not to white patrons and allies, as most abolitionists tended to do, but rather directly to black Americans, exhorting them to take action in achieving their own freedom from slavery. Walker died of tuberculosis within a year of the appeal's publication, but as this excerpt shows, his work set the stage for the next wave of ardent champions of black liberation. My dearly beloved brethren and fellow citizens, having traveled over a considerable portion of these United States, and having, in the course of my travels, taken the most accurate observations of things as they exist, the result of my observations has warranted the full and unshaken conviction that we, colored people of these United States, are the most degraded, wretched, and abject set of beings that ever lived since the world began, and I pray God that none of us, like us, may ever live again until time shall be no more. Those heathen nations of antiquity had but little more among them than the name and form of slavery while wretchedness and endless miseries were reserved to be poured out upon our fathers, ourselves, and our children by Christian Americans. I am fully aware in making this appeal to my much afflicted and suffering brethren that I shall not only be assailed by those whose greatest earthly desires are to keep us in abject ignorance and wretchedness, and who are of the firm conviction that heaven has designed us and our children to be slaves and beasts of burden to them and their children. I will ask one question here. Can our condition be any worse? Can it be more mean and abject? If there are any changes, will they not be for the better, though they may appear for the worst at first? Can they get us any lower? Where can they get us? They are afraid to treat us worse, for they know well the day that they do it, they are gone. But against all accusations which may or can be preferred against me, I appeal to heaven for my motive in writing. Who knows that my object is, if possible, to awaken in the breasts of my afflicted, degraded, and slumbering brethren a spirit of inquiry and investigation respecting our miseries and wretchedness in this Republican land of liberty. Follow the link at the top of this page to a PBS website that not only provides the full text of Walker's appeal, but also gives reactions from people in Walker's own time, as well as the view of some contemporary historians. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.